One of the things that's new in x for 2024, the one that I'm probably most excited about, is the new moving head effect and model. Let's dive in. If you don't know me, I'm David from Learning Christmas Lighting and Above AVL. What we do is we try to bring together the best information on Christmas lighting, make it super accessible for beginners to be able to build a Christmas light show, an animated to music Christmas light show. So if you're new here, thanks so much for being here, subscribe. But what we're doing today is talking about some of our favorite new features in this video and the next few in X lights in 2024. And for sure, the one that takes the cake for me is the new moving head model, why? Well, of course, I've always loved moving heads. I come from the stage lighting industry and, you know, have always worked with moving heads, have a long history with moving heads. And of course, as a vendor, we sell a lot of moving heads under the Dominar brand. So that's why I love moving heads so much. And this effect takes it in such an awesome way because before using moving heads and X lights was really difficult. Um, it, it didn't really jive well with the software, to be honest, like it was kind of a, a funky addition and, and it was kind of outside of what X lights was really good at. So like, for example, I did a video last year that kind of walked through how to use an external program and keep it in sync with a show. But now there's a new moving head model, which is great because like, you know, moving heads were gaining in popularity, but being difficult to use meant that there was always kind of a limitation there where people were kind of scared of them, right? Um, I think this new effect takes them away and I wanna show you how. So in this video, we don't have any moving heads set up because if you go to our Dominar X resources page, you can see that in action. Uh, the beautiful thing about the new model is what you see in the preview, and I apologize for my preview being so sideways, but I never plug in a mouse to this computer and I don't know how to reset the view otherwise. But that's the cool thing is it, it does exactly what it does on the screen in real life. So I've got a group here with all moving heads and they are the new Moving Head Advanced 3D model made by Gil Jones. Now with this model, um, it's really key because everything matches up and I'm gonna bring in this Moving Head effect and put it on my all Moving Head group here, okay? It is so incredibly key that your model is set up really well. And that's gonna be the difference between vendors that just kind of offer a model willy nilly or just made it quick and ones that really take the time to make sure everything matches up. If they don't do this, then when you set up your model, it's not going to match perfectly as it moves and as it turns on and off and it's gonna be a nightmare. When it is set up well though, it means that any sequence that you buy that sequence using this effect is going to translate to your moving heads because everything's converted to degrees and back so that it'll be universal to any moving head. It's, it's really awesome. What I'm gonna do is just kind of demonstrate here. So first thing I do is I select all my fixtures, moving heads one through four. I set that ID of the moving head here in the layout tab. So it says fixture, MH1, two, three, four. Okay, you can have up to eight at the time of this recording. I've just got four in this model, so there they are on the house. So I select all four, I've got them in my effect. And now my first one here is position, my first tab. So this is an overall position, like where they're starting in general. You can see I can move them on the pan, I can tilt them. Now this, this X, Y axis is not the pan and tilt channels on an axis. And that's really important to understand. A lot of people think that, and I thought it when I first got into this, but that's not what it is. It's not that this is pan and uh, sorry for my mouse. This is pan and this is tilt. That's not what it is. It is a literal coordinate grid for 360 degrees in both directions as best I understand it. Okay, so when you, if you take it here for example, and then it says pan here, but it's actually horizontal degrees. Because if I just start to move that, it's gonna move in a straight line, but you'll actually see the moving heads um, should adjust their tilt a little along that straight line as best I understand, okay? So you've got the ability to move that, to adjust it in any way you want, okay? And then you also have the ability to fan it, which is just for example, I'm gonna turn off the fan and move to the next tab and show you guys what, what happens there, okay? So next we've got the dimmer tab. Okay, this is gold here. So a lot of these tabs have this button that says save preset. And this is where um, it's gonna save you so much time if you sequence your own moving heads. Because you can just recall any of these presets that you've built before. 
Isn't that awesome? And I believe I saw that the ability to put this on timing tracks is coming if it's not already in here and I've missed it. Okay, so you're able to do just a typical value curve. You can select the on or off one as well. I do like to have it, you know, start with a curve so that the moving head can move into position before it turns on. However, you don't have to do the dimmer in the dimmer tab here. Here's some thoughts on that. Okay, first and foremost is back on the model, what we found is that um, you have, thanks Gil Jones for letting me know this, the dimmer properties with the dimmer channel, and for some reason that's not filled out when you download a model and import it. You have the shutter properties, which is the strobe channel, if, if you have a shutter that needs to be engaged. Um, honestly, I don't even fill it out on our Domain RXs because it's not needed it can just hit a zero and then you're going to have the color properties which also has a spot for the dimmer channel okay my recommendation is not to enable the dimmer channel here in the color properties when you do that anytime you select a color here in the control area it automatically turns the light on and generally you don't want that because you want it to move into position set your color and then turn the dimmer on so you can do that here, like I said, from the dimmer using these value curves. Or what I like to do is actually just go and do it on the intensity. So create a group like here, it's way out of order, but I have an MH intensity group and just run an on effect on there, right? Just put that on effect on there, on effect on there and, and have it fade in and fade out, right? So have it one second fade in, fade out, say, and then have it not be as long as the effect itself, especially on the front end, so that, you know, the effect turns on, the moving heads move into place or start moving, and then it turns on. Okay, so the timing that you would follow, the musical timing, you generally have the intensity following the closest. The actual movement would not be perfectly in sync to the music because it starts just before and it, and it will stop after the intensity comes on and off, as you can see. Okay, now, next tab. Okay, um, whenever you return back, always remember to select. You can select all, none, odds, evens. I would love the option here. This is just something I thought of recently based on my stage lighting experience is to do like outer inner or like um, basically do mirrored pairs. So if I have eight, you know, I would do one and three and six and eight, you know, would be a pair just like mirrored odd or mirrored even or the ability to define our own in there. That'd be cool. But anyway, I'm getting I'm getting off track. So what I like to do here is, you know, I'm kind of 50 50 between doing the dimmer in here and just doing it below on an intensity group. I think both are totally valid approaches. Other effects like single strand can also be used in this way in terms of pathing. So pathing is where we get to have some fun next. Okay. So pathing is where we're doing movements. Now pathing builds on the position. This has a few huge benefits for you. First and foremost, adjusting the position in a bot sequence is going to be really easy to say, okay, this is shining a little too low for me. It's on my neighbor's house. Like for example, my neighbor's house across the street that my moving heads shoot towards is uphill from mine, right? So somebody else might build a sequence where the lights go flat, you know, off the top of a roof say, and that works if your neighbor's house is equal height or lower. It doesn't work if your neighbor's house is higher, like mine is right across the street. So this is where I could just go in, grab a sequence that I've imported from somebody else and say, you know, they've got the lights, select all, they've got the lights pointed down this low. And I go, you know what? I need to move them up here. I do that. And then I go to my pathing tab. You know, somebody that's creating a sequence or you yourself are gonna then create a path in here. It's click and drag, it's so stinking cool. So I could just click, and drag. If I hold shift, at least on Windows, I get a curve option, and then you can uh, close it at the end or just escape to clear. And look at that, the moving heads fall. This is so stinking cool. If I adjust my curve, I'll see they work on the curve. There's lots you can do here. I'm obviously not doing it justice here. I do like to center these shapes. I'll just close it. I do like to center these shapes on the grid here. And the reason why I think that's the best practice is because that enables you to adjust the position with the position tab so that, you know, the effect is always kind of centered on the grid and then the position moves it. It makes it more friendly for adjustments on the fly once your show starts, etc. You can also do a time offset, which is like a fan. 
and it makes it do like that where the lights are all offset. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's such a huge step forward for moving heads in X lights and it's awesome. Next, we've got the color tab. So the color tab works in two ways. One is there's just the plain old color wheel and it tries to match the values that, that your model is set to here with stuff off the color wheel. It does a pretty good job. You know, with my stage lighting background, I like just grabbing colors off the color wheel. Um, of course, if you have an RGB fixture, you would be able to just get full RGB control here. Like for example, we actually have a new fixture that I was thinking about um, from Chave Lighting. Yeah, it's a more expensive head, but it's an LED based beam fixture with a color mixing source. Very cool. Um, and you would be able to use this as so with that. So you see, it doesn't always pick up on the color or maybe it's because I've selected it manually, but you're able to bring in your colors there. And then last but not least, we have the status tab. It just tells you what the effect's actually doing. Kind of a great troubleshooting tool. Um, so you can see here, there's a lot to this effect, um, but it's really intuitive. And I, I got to thank Gil Jones, the rest of the developers. I know I've threw over a quick donation after this and was like, hey, you know, thanks so much for that moving head effect. There's so much good in this. It's it's really positive. It works really well once you work out the kinks. But again, like how your vendor makes your model and if they pay attention, if they take the time to thoroughly test it really matters, okay? When the settings are off just a little bit, like with our first model, the Dominar X, we spent weeks and hours and hours and hours in this thing, you know, just working with it, which is kind of why it enrages me a little bit to see that there's another vendor with a model that matches perfectly, including all of the values on the color wheel, like these ones. They all seem to match perfectly to our model, which was out first. Um, so I'm not saying anything there. I'm just saying, uh, you know, I noticed that. It's frustrating because, you know, we put in hours and hours and hours of work um, <laughs> to, to come up with that. And maybe it works well with their moving head, maybe it doesn't. But getting all the settings right with the pan and the tilt is, is in my mind, fairly difficult. Um, I don't think there's an easier way to do it. I think it's just difficult because you're translating everything from the degrees that the light can do into real world 360 degrees. And so sometimes you get the light pointed in such a way where you start moving it. We had this problem for a while where it was moving, the, the head was moving really well. It was doing the things that it was supposed to, you know, really well, but we'd move it side to side. And anytime we cross this line, the light would flip both in the model and real life. And that was really annoying. Uh, and so definitely something to watch out for. Um, if you want more info, we've got our how to use the Dominar X page, which shows you with a real light how it responds. Um, and we've got that over on our resources page. Of course, when you need moving heads, come to the experts. There's a lot of vendors selling them now. A lot of them either don't have a custom model. Maybe they don't do repairs in the US if something would get damaged. Um, maybe if it's a lamp-based unit, they don't have any guide available on their site or manual as to how to change that lamp, especially with a waterproof one. Uh, that's going to be the Dominar difference. No, we're not the cheapest on the market, but we have an excellent reputation in the community for supporting people, taking amazing care of people, and if and when anything goes wrong, having those repair facilities here in the U.S. to take care of that. We're the only vendor doing that that I'm aware of, um, and that's why people love us. No, we're not the cheapest, but we'd love to help you with your moving heads this year. We've got lots of stock coming, um, and so grab them early, grab them often, uh, and we'd love to help. If you enjoyed this video, hit a big subscribe. We'll be back in the next video with our next favorite new feature from X-Lights for 2024. You don't want to miss this. We'll see you there. Thanks.